Good morning and welcome to the Stalls TV Morning Show. I'm Courtney. And I'm Josh. And today, I bet you can guess, we have an exciting episode. <laughs> I was say we're excited. <laughs> Always. It's Monday morning. How could you not be happy? Come on, guys. It's Monday. So today, we're going to talk through a lot of different things. We started sort of a new format last week where we go through industry news in the first few minutes of the morning show and share items that we feel are relevant to your business or that you could benefit from as we peruse trade magazines and industry websites and whatnot. And then, so we're going to do a little bit of that. And then we're also going to talk specifically about fabric um, with some stuff we've learned um, along the way with how to decorate different types of fabrics and constructions. And I think that will help you just in general as you work to sell t-shirts and other products. And then also as you look to gain the technical knowledge on how to uh, print them. And then we have a new station, a new station, a new section <laughs> called Inspiration Station. Is that right? Did it I get is that the right? Inspiration Station, yes. Yeah, where we're going to share uh, looks from around the Stalls Heat Printing Universe and Facebook to inspire you with some ideas uh, to decorate apparel. But let's start with industry news, right? So we just returned uh, from a show in Minneapolis. Not me personally, but the team came back from the DAC show. And I know the group that was there, um, we do a lot of presentations for Stalls TV, and uh, Bob Robinson delivered a session on trends. Um, and he came back this morning and just said the response was unbelievable. The room was jam-packed. So you put together that presentation. So tell us a little bit about um, what people are liking about that. Yeah, and so we're seeing a lot of things. Um, obviously, this is a show or a seminar that we do um, throughout the country through ISS. We also have been doing a similar one at the DAC show. So if you're in the area of Chicago, you'll get to see it live um, in April. But the cool thing about it that we're really seeing is a lot of people are trending towards um, two different big areas that are trending. One we're seeing is full color bling. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of trends towards sublimating heat transfer vinyl like glitter flake to create full color patterns. We're seeing people mixing full color transfers, whether they're digital transfers or just sublimation, direct to garment printing, screen printing, and adding um, foil or glitter or different areas to make the design stand out with some spot color finishes and effects. Mm -hmm. And then we're also seeing a lot of color blocking. And so we're seeing it um, in sports apparel, we're seeing it in spirit wear, we're seeing it a lot in the garment and in the design where people are taking different elements, either the sleeves or the bottom half of the shirt and creating some color blocking effects. Yeah, and we're seeing that um, just trend through wearables in general with the color blocking from a decorations uh, perspective, definitely the mixing and the matching. Um, the color block uh, garments, whether that's in a basic t-shirt construction, a fan jersey, a performance tee, uh, tend to really help a decorator with color selection and coming up with designs. And as we see the trend towards full color, um, another piece of industry news that we wanted to bring to you is um, a stalls company, Imprintables Warehouse, actually launched a new website that plays into this trend with one specific section um, in products. So we're going to turn it over to that uh, website now. but. So I'd encourage you to visit imprintables.com, see uh, what their business is all about. They're sort of the uh, sign arm of stalls in addition to many other things where you can buy uh, sign materials. But one of the things that I'm really excited here is the custom pattern generator that plays into full color. So talk to us a little bit about what you can do here. Yeah, and so the um, pattern generator, Imprintables offers a ton of different pattern stock that you can purchase. But one of the cool things they launched with a new website is the ability to build your own patterns. Um, and so we're starting to see a lot of custom patterns being added into the full color trend that we're seeing. And so I can go in here, click print to order, and start to really customize my design. And so obviously chevron is a really big trend. Um, so if you wanted to do a multicolor chevron design for maybe a school, I can go ahead and switch out uh, my materials to match the school. So maybe a blue, change to a red. Yeah, and just hold there once you pick pick it for a second. Look at all those colors. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable, really, of what you can offer um, to your customers and really the changes that you can make to these designs. And now I can take this custom pattern, create a custom design, and really just take the design to the next level and offer things that they're seeing in retail to all of my sportswear and spirit designs this year. Yeah, so from a product perspective, if you don't own a printer cutter, these are actual rolls of heat transfer vinyl. Um, that you can purchase. So effectively what you're getting is a uh, full pattern, uh, whatever you select and customize, um, printed onto that heat transfer vinyl. So it comes to you ready to cut, weed, and heat apply. So for our vinyl cutter owners, this is a pretty big deal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
So when you look at that, um, there's a lot of different markets for full color and bling. Uh, one of the biggest is probably Cheer and Dan. So I know we wanted to point out uh, a publication that our viewers may not know about that covers a lot of the sort of sports world market and has some specific things about the Cheer market in their March um, publication. Right, so we talk a lot about printwear impressions, but we very rarely um, talk about Team Insight magazine and really some of the benefits that decorators can get by subscribing to this magazine. Um, like you mentioned, it has a lot to do with the team and sports world, but in March they had an interesting um, article on cheer and just the sales potential there as you start to understand cheer as a sport and as a market that you should start going after. Um, obviously, I was a cheerleader when I was younger, so I'm a big fan of the cheer sport. Um, but I really think there's a lot of opportunities for decorators to package together items and sell them. So not only just cheer uniforms, which we talk about a lot with um, different suppliers, but being able to sell camp apparel and competition uniforms and um, t-shirts for different spirit days and stuff like that. So there's right. a huge opportunity to start selling more than just the team uniform. Yeah, so this magazine will give you all the details on not only uh, cheerleading, but every other sport that you can imagine. So is it fair to say you think cheerleading is a sport? It is a sport, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's fair to I'm say. not disagreeing with you. I just, <laughs> you said cheerleading has a sport about five times. So it seems like you're pretty passionate. I'm pretty, pretty clear about that. All right, good. But anyways, it's a great publication. Um, all the digital editions are available online. You can catch up on your reading and start to understand the sports marketplace. There's a ton of great um, information in that publication. Now, when we start to talk about wanting to reach the cheerleading market as a sport, um, where can we look for our blank uh, wearables? Um, well, obviously Teamwork Athletic does a great job with supplying you with the actual team uniform. There's a ton of different suppliers, but um, Pizzazz, Dancewear, and um, Spiritwear also has a lot of really cool, trendy, different looks that we can look at. And so I think you had a ad from them from the Impressions Magazine for April. Yeah, just as we're thumbing through the Impressions Magazine and as we zoom in, let me just point out the cover first because I'm extremely pretty excited about that one yeah yeah <laughs> this is nice so um, this is impressions magazine the print edition that came to my house uh, I think it was last week um, but you can see the myogrid apparel that we've been featuring here for a while on stalls TV made the cover with a nice digital uh, print cut transfer we're excited about that but as we turn through the pages um, we see pizzazz featured there with an ad uh, pizzazz performance wear but you can see they're offering a lot of different uh, cheerleading shells, different colorways. They do um, not only your basic cheer shells, but you can see a lot of stretch fabrics there sort of on the end caps. And uh, this speaks nicely to sort of the evolution of fabrics and where we want to go with today's episode, decorators accommodating different fabrics. Like one of the trends I know is decorating performance wear. Um, we feature that plenty. Right. Um, stretch fabrics fall into that even into the cheer market. But when we look at the broader market, t-shirt is still the number one selling item. It is, and the t-shirt really is um, difficult to decorate today because it's not the traditional 100% cotton, easy to use. There's different weights, um, there's different fabric content, so now we have 100% poly, we have tri-blends, we have 50-50, 60-40. I mean, it's hard to really guarantee that a, every t-shirt is going to apply the exact same way through every print application. Right, so there's different considerations as you look at the t-shirt market. and. Um, just as a quick reference, I want to pull up this piece that we've pulled down from San Mar U, um, and they do a great sort of guide, um, basic t-shirt guide, going through their different styles. So we're going to talk through this, but most of this content's available from San Mar U. You can download this guide um, where we go from the good, better, best philosophy as far as your basic t-shirt. So let's start with, on the far end of the spectrum, the open-ended um, cotton. So. When we talk about open-ended cotton, we're typically talking about a shirt that's a value cotton. Um, it can be different weights. So before we go too deep, let me just talk briefly about weight of fabric. So um, how do they determine the weight of a t-shirt fabric? Um, for the weight of the t-shirt fabric, it's actually the thickness of the material. So they would weigh the specific fabric content to know um, no matter how it's constructed, it makes that same out. So if you see something like a 4.3 ounce versus a, a 6.8 ounce, there's going to be a difference in the thickness there. Yeah, so you really get your, your guide on it when you're looking at a print piece by how many ounces. Um, and so they'll take the square yard of the fabric and they'll measure the ounces. So 
basically, you know, we can categorize them as lightweight, midweight, heavyweight, but you're going to see it all the way from, you know, what, like a 2.7 ounce up to maybe like a 6 ounce right. um, that can be in a t-shirt construction. So as you're looking at uh, a website or a print piece, there's definitely decoration considerations that you have to take into account when you're talking about different weights of t-shirts. And so I think this is a good example. This is my favorite one to <laughs> This point is my out. favorite design. Yeah. And you love to bring it up. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> but it is, it is a great point. It makes a good example because when we look at lightweight fabrics, um, traditionally those garments that are 2 ounces to 5.5 ounces are considered lightweight. Um, but this is actually a large digital transfer with no void or open area. So it makes it kind of feel like a uh, bulletproof vest yeah, exactly. on the shirt whenever you wear something that thick. And the other thing we do with this design is we direct layer over top of it. And so that adds some weight when you start layering transfers, whether it's a full color transfer with a cat cut like we did there or just heat transfer vinyl in general. Um, and so you want to be able to keep some void areas. Um, whether you have open areas that you're direct, you're gap, uh, gapping the artwork so that you don't have them direct layered on top of each other, adding some weight. This is a great example of right. void areas because we weeded out a lot of the center to make it feel lightweight on that really lightweight tank top. Yeah, and so there's as you look at weights, um, definitely take in mind your design. Obviously, if you're going to be building up layers or doing patch-like designs, they're going to feel heavier on any style of t-shirts, but they're especially going to weigh down a lighter weight t-shirt. So as the ounce count goes down, you need to design with a lighter weight heat transfer film or screen printed transfer, more void areas in the design, because you want that t-shirt to maintain its lightweight when you're selling to your customers. Right, and if you have a design that's larger like that, just consider maybe putting it on a, a thicker or heavier weight t-shirt or a sweatshirt or something that has more bulk to it. Yeah, and this isn't a bad design. It's going to feel fantastic on a heavyweight hoodie, but it just weighs down uh, right, a lightweight tank or tee. And so, Got a little off track there, so just to start back on the spectrum, once you understand weight and fabric content, then we start to look at the different sort of options within um, a content. So we had the basic open-ended carded cotton, which is your cheap value tee. This is going to be pretty much the most popular on the market, but it's sort of bottom of the barrel as far as pricing and quality. Still nice, but it's your basic t-shirt. So if you need to hit a price point, this is going to be the way to go. Now, when we start to look at ring spun cotton and understand what exactly that means, not only uh, from the t-shirt perspective, from a decoration perspective, there's some differences. Um, number one, you get a more uniform sort of weave to the strands of cotton that are used to comprise the shirt. And so basically you get a nicer, smooth, flat surface. It feels softer, although it can come in any variety of ounces or weights. Um, generally, the fabric itself, when compared to an equal weight of an open-ended cotton, is going to feel softer, smoother, an overall nicer quality t-shirt. So when we're looking to print ring-spun cotton, or when we're looking at printing in general, what's, when would I want to go to a ring-spun versus a basic? I guess the ring-spun we traditionally see almost 100% of the time in direct-to-garment printing. Mm -hmm. um, that's, again, going back to the smooth composition and the way that the fibers are manufactured, and that gives you that nice, flat, smooth area. Um, so when you're laying down the ink, you don't have uh, raised areas from either fuzz or different bumps in the fabric type. Yeah, when you go down to the microscopic level, you start to see fibers that are coming up through and that ultimately when you're laying that ink down directly to the garment, it's going to want to um, strike through that. They call it fibrillation and screen printing as well, but you get that sort of strike through and that's why you see, you know, people are soaking the shirt in pre-treat and hammering it with the heat press to get it completely as flat as possible, but starting with a ring spun tee goes a long way. Um, another place a ring spun tee can particularly be beneficial is in foil applications. So we've just launched the new CAD cut adhesive with the heat transfer foil, but basically when you're pressing that adhesive to a nice smooth surface, you're going to get a better even foil coverage on top of that. You're not going to see those little open holes or pin marks in the foil like you may see on an open-ended cotton as it just sort of absorbs or there's inconsistencies in the way it lays down. Right, absolutely. It's a good point. Okay, so that's the difference is, and then of course you can have uh, different blends of t-shirts, but when we talk specifically about blends, uh, one of the most popular blends that we're seeing right now is none other than the... The tri-blend. The tri-blend. Yeah, so that one we've talked a little bit about on the morning show because it's a tricky t-shirt. Yeah. It's got a mixture of cotton, polyester, and rayon content. So depending on how much rayon and polyester is in this garment, it can make it really challenging to decorate with um, high heat applications, specifically the heat press or um, a screen print dryer. And so we're seeing a lot of decorators that are decorating these, especially in dark colors, 
moving towards uh, low temperature heat transfers or just low temperature print solutions to print them a little bit better. Yeah, tri-blends are challenging. We're dealing with synthetics, so we're dealing with rayon polyesters. There's different blends of tri-blends, if you will, some which contained uh, more cotton content, but basically what they have in common is there's the three fabrics and everybody's going for the super soft feel. But as you sort of engineer the super soft feel into it with those fabrics, you can run into issues with scorch marks and, and what have you and shrinking through a screen printing dryer. Um, so you definitely want to be considerate that this is a premium option. It's going to be upwards on the scale of good, better, best. It's going to be towards your best for a t-shirt construction so you can make more money on it, but special uh, considerations have to be made for printing them. Absolutely, and it's definitely a lightweight fabric, so making sure the transfer you're using or the uh, print technique that you're using is lightweight, open, fun, that's uh, definitely what we need on those garments. Yeah, you definitely see more um, in the lower sort of ounces on the tri-blends yep. uh, as well. And then we look at um, sort of the last is our performance wear, or 100% polyester. This is going to be on the highest end of the best, and we've talked about this a lot, so I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time um, on this, I don't suggest we do as we're uh, running out of time, but you definitely want to have a low temp um, heat application when you're dealing with uh, performance wear. Yeah, polyesters are not the old uh, suede jackets that we saw in the past, They're, or even team uniforms. They're very much moisture wicking, lightweight, mm -hmm. um, heat sensitive items, and so that's why a lot of the times you get a polyester performance shirt from Under Armour, you're seeing you know no iron or cool iron because they're just not um, able to take that heat. Yes, and it is an absolute terrible thing to put something like that on a perfor performance polyester. You should never do that to that poor garment. Um, as we sort of go through what's happening with polyester, you know, some news as well is that um, we're starting to see polyesters can be sublimated typically, but not every out-of-the-box polyester t-shirt can be sublimated because it leaves marks and yellows. It's just not designed. But there are certain um, customer bases and segments of the market that want a sublimated garment that has the advantage of the ink actually being dyed into the fabric, but with a, something that feels like a t-shirt. So we're seeing companies come up with um, garments that feel like cotton, but are really 100% polyester for sublimation. And so we showed this, um, I think out in Atlantic City was the first time, yep. um, mid middle of last month. But we have this jerseys uh, garment, and we handed these out uh, to attendees of our uh, workshop class, but this is ideal for sublimation printing. Basically, it has a tubular body construction with lay flat sleeves, and so basically this makes it perfect for all over sublimation. Um, you can heat this up to 400 degrees for 40 seconds, and it has a tearaway, tearaway label. Am I cracking you up? Yeah. Because all the sales points are right <laughs> on the back of the shirt, so she's losing it over here. But I want to show you a close-up of this if we can uh, zoom up, because this garment's pretty cool if you're doing sublimation, so we want to make sure you're aware of it. Um, you can see the style here. It's available from San Marts, the Jersey Sport, um, item 21M, and read about some of the advantages there. But uh, the beauty here is that um, this garment is perfect. It's 100% spun polyester that feels like cotton. You're seeing the 5.3 ounce, so we're getting a good reference to the weight of the fabric as we spoke about, and you're getting all the performance benefits with something that uh, feels like a t-shirt. So. We're seeing fabrics evolve. We're seeing constant things come up, but understanding the basics of weight, uh, fabric composition, and how to handle those from uh, a decoration standpoint is key um, as you try to succeed in this business. Right, absolutely. And so um, that's some important things to keep in mind. And then as we start to transition towards the, the end of the morning show, I like to share some inspiration. I think it's important. Um, we look often at magazines. We look at um, just different customer designs and things like that and gain inspiration um, not only for what we see is trending in the marketplace, but what ideas we think that you guys can um, implement. And so one way that we do that is through um, the show and tell on Stahl's Facebook. And so if you haven't liked Stahl's Facebook page, um, it's Stahl's All Things Heat Printing, so you can check that out. But one cool thing about um, what they do is on Saturdays they do a show and tell, and that allows us to see what our customers and our uh, followers are, are decorating. And so we've put together a video um, of those, and we want to share that with you guys to give you some inspiration for your Monday.
are you inspired? I am inspired. I think the uh, knockout design with the glitter and the electric was definitely my favorite. Absolutely. <laughs> so just to sort of wrap things up, as you, as you look at that, um, these businesses, maybe some of you, are sharing these photos and your ideas with us on Facebook. So we'd, one takeaway is certainly go out there, like the Stalls Heat Printing page on Facebook, and share with us on Saturdays during our show and tell and see those as they happen. I think this week there were like 100 different yeah. comments or posts uh, this past Saturday. And then another takeaway is really um, photography can be leveraged um, in your business in a number of ways. And we know photos are one of the most effective things on any um, social media channel, whether that's Facebook or Instagram. And that sort of plays into what we're going to be talking about next week. Yeah, we are. So we're going to talk a lot about um, social media and particularly Instagram for t-shirt businesses next week and just um, share some tips. For those of you that are in the social media world, you've probably heard over the last few weeks that some things changed for Instagram, some algorithms changed. And so we want to talk a little bit about that and just some ideas for growing your business with that new platform because it's really becoming successful for a lot of businesses. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for watching the Stalls TV Morning Show. See you next week.